1938, the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act of 2019. The clerk will report, report the title of the bill. Senate 1838, an act to amend the Hong Kong Policy Act of 1992 and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Engel, and the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Smith, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Engel. Thank you. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on S-1838. Without, without objection. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The passage of the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act today will once again demonstrate our support for the people of Hong Kong. The House passed our version of the bill several weeks ago, and this version passed the Senate last night as well, demonstrating without a doubt that the U.S. Congress stands with the people of Hong Kong even during a particularly troubling time. We are seeing the escalation of violence in unprecedented ways, indiscriminate use of force against students, and troubling reports of Chinese forces directing and manipulating the security forces in Hong Kong. However, as Joshua Wong said when he was last here with us on Capitol Hill just a few weeks ago, the people of Hong Kong will never walk alone. That's a quote. Never has this been truer than today. Although the abuses and injustices that have been endured by the people of Hong Kong are clear and evident to everyone, the policy challenge that this presents for the United States is far more nuanced. It is my expectation that when implementing this legislation, the Secretary of State will understand congressional intent that this legislation is designed to help the U.S. government and the U.S. Congress better evaluate the erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy and ultimately stem the tide of China's aggressive behavior toward the people of Hong Kong. Our objective is not to punish Hong Kong, but to help preserve and protect Hong Kong's autonomy in the face of Beijing's flagrant disregard for one country, two systems, which they had promised. As such, we believe it is in the national security interest of the United States to protect the autonomy of Hong Kong. It is with that intent that this entire legislative exercise has been undertaken. I hope that in evaluating how to apply the mandates in this bill, this administration and any future administration will give the best interest of the people of Hong Kong the highest consideration. I reserve the balance of my time. From, gentleman from New York reserves balance of time. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And first of all, I want to thank the distinguished chairman and the ranking member, Mr. McCall, for their strong support for this effort, both bills that are up today. Um, and I would also especially like the speaker for her leadership as well. Madam Speaker, <coughs> or Mr. Speaker, since the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre 30 years ago, I've had the privilege of working with colleagues on both sides of the aisle, including and especially Speaker Pelosi, uh, Jim McGovern, my good friend, and he's the chairman of the China Commission, and I'm ranking member, Congressman Frank Wolf, former member who was tenacious in his fight for human rights, the rule of law, and democracy for the people of China. We have always believed that every person deserves better than the brutality so many endure and the systematic violations of their universally recognized human rights. China's ruthless dictators do not agree, and they are driven, they are obsessed to tighten their control. Today, Mr. Speaker, Hong Kong is burning. The status quo is no longer. The brutal government crackdown on democracy activists has escalated. Tragically, under President Xi Jinping, human rights abuse throughout China has significantly worsened, including the pervasive use of torture, religious persecution, human trafficking and genocide against Muslim Uyghurs. Last month, Mr. Speaker, President Xi ominously warned of even more brutal violence to come in Hong Kong, threatening, quote, crushed bodies and shattered bones. And the Hong Kong government itself prefers bullets and batons over peaceful and political dialogue that would address the Hong Kong people's rightful grievances. That is sad, and it's a sad and disgusting reality. And it is what the Chinese government, however, does best, suppress 
repress, torture, kill, and censor. With the passage of the Hong Kong Human Rights Act, the United States Congress is making it clear that beating, torturing, and jailing democracy activists is absolutely wrong. We stand in solidarity with the people of Hong Kong. There will be strong sanctions, other ramifications for this crackdown, for this abuse of power. The people of Hong Kong have feared for their freedom for a long time. In 2014, Mr. Speaker, I met with Martin Lee and Anson Chan, two titans of Hong Kong's democracy movement. They and Scott Flipsey of the China Commission and I met in my office for hours as we discussed the Chinese Communist Party's growing influence and their attempts that had already begun to degrade autonomy and human rights in Hong Kong. That is, Mr. Speaker, the genesis of this bill and our five-year effort to push back on Beijing's pernicious interference in Hong Kong. In the midst of the 2014 umbrella movement, I first introduced, joined by Speaker Pelosi, the first Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. My CECE co-chair, Senator Brown of Ohio, introduced the same bill in the Senate. Over the years, in 2015 and 2017, Senator Rubio and I upgraded the bill to reflect the kidnapping of booksellers, the disqualification of elected lawmakers, and the political prosecution of Joshua Wong, Nathan Law, Benny Tai, and many others. However, every time, every single time we pushed for passage, there was vigorous opposition from diplomats, so-called experts, committee chairs, and U.S. business interests in Hong Kong. So passage of this legislation is long overdue. My House bill, co-sponsored by my good friend and colleague Jim McGovern of Massachusetts and 46 other bipartisan co-sponsors, passed last month on October 15th. Today we consider a final bill derived from working with our colleagues in the United States Senate. Specifically, the Act directs the Secretary of State to report and certify to Congress annually whether Hong Kong continues to deserve special treatment under U.S. law. Different from mainland China in such matters as trade, customs, sanctions, enforcement, law enforcement cooperation, and protection of human rights and the rule of law. It directs the State Department not to deny entry visas based primarily on the applicant's arrest or detention for participating in nonviolent protest activity in Hong Kong. It requires for the next seven years an annual report from the Commerce Department on whether Hong Kong government adequately enforces U.S. export controls and sanctions laws, including on those goods and services transshipped to North Korea, Iran, or other countries relating to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, narcotics trafficking, and more. It requires an assessment of whether U.S. origin items, including software, technology, and services, have been transferred from Hong Kong to China in violation of U.S. law and have been used by China for mass surveillance, predictive policing, or for the so-called social credit system. I know some members may be wondering, what is the social credit system? It's a ubiquitous, totalitarian, brave new world system scheduled for implementation by 2020 that uses public records, online activity, and other tools of surveillance to aggregate data on every Chinese citizen and business and use that data to monitor, shape, and rate financial, social, religious, or political behaviors. The bill requires the president to submit a strategy to Congress to protect U.S. citizens and businesses in Hong Kong from the erosion of autonomy and the rule of law because of the actions taken by the Chinese government. It requires the president to identify and sanction persons in Hong Kong or in mainland China responsible for extrajudicial rendition and gross violation of internationally recognized human rights. The Chinese government warns us repeatedly not to interfere in China's internal affairs. But the only interference I see in is Beijing's meddling in the democratic freedoms of Hong Kong. All I see, and this body sees, my fellow colleagues, is Beijing's failure to honor the promises made in the 1984 Sino-British Declaration, an international treaty. All we see is Beijing's failure to honor the promises of Hong Kong's 
basic law. We cannot avert our lives to what is happening in Hong Kong. We cannot silence our voices when the rule of law, democracy, human rights, free speech, and autonomy are being threatened in Hong Kong. We must remain steadfast in support for the people of Hong Kong. The whole world has a stake in a peaceful and just resolution in Hong Kong. The passage of the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act is an important signal that this Congress, Democrat and Republican alike, House and Senate, considers Hong Kong's freedoms and autonomy a critical interest of the United States and the international community. In Hong Kong, they encourage each other to keep pressing forward with the phrase, Jayo. So today I say to you, all of you in Hong Kong, Jayo, your cause is a noble one and you will not be forgotten. I reserve the balance of our time. <laughs> the gentleman from New Jersey reserves the balance of time. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it's now my pleasure to yield one minute to our Speaker of the House, who has been very, very active in Hong Kong freedom, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Pelosi. Without objection, the gentlelady from California is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the distinguished chairman for yielding. I salute him and Mr. McCall, the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. To you, Mr. Engel, uh, Mr. Chairman and Mr. McCall, thank you for giving us, affording this opportunity uh, to vote on uh, the Human Rights and Democracy, the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. Uh, this is a proud day for the U.S. Congress, for our values of freedom and justice, and for the people of Hong Kong. For six months, the people of Hong Kong have stirred the hearts of all freedom-loving people with their extraordinary outpouring of courage and their refusal to relinquish their demand for democracy, democratic freedoms, and the rule of law, which was promised more than two decades ago. Today, the Congress is sending an unmistakable message to the world that the United States stands in solidarity with freedom-loving people of Hong Kong, and they we fully support their fight for freedom. Uh, we salute Chairman McGovern, their leading voice for human rights in China and around the world, our Congressional Executive Commission on China Chair, and also Chair of the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission. And I thank Congressman Smith, uh, just listening to him uh, talk about, for, we're into like our third generation of freedom-loving people in Hong Kong, aren't we, Mr. Smith? I'm so glad you acknowledge the work of our distinguished former colleague, Frank Wolf, who was so, so very much a part and still continues to be a spiritual leader to us in this regard. Uh, we've worked with Martin Lee and Anson Chan way back when, and then, uh, so late 80s, early 90s, and into the, this new century with another generation, and now three generations, Martin Lee still being involved, but with Joshua Wong and all of the young, Nathan Law and all of the young um, uh, participants who are there. Uh, because, uh, because it is a sad situation. In 1997, when the United Kingdom transferred Hong Kong to China, America was hopeful that the people of Hong Kong would achieve the high degree of autonomy, that's in quotes, high degree of autonomy that they were promised. Today, it is beyond question of that China has utterly broken that promise. America has been watching for years as the people of Hong Kong have been increasingly denied their full autonomy and faced with a cruel crackdown on their freedoms and an escalation of violence. Most recently, the violent attacks against students at Hong Kong Polytechnic University have shocked the world as unconscionable and unacceptable. Uh, more than 1,000 young people were denied food, water, first aid. Uh, scores were sent to the hospital for hypothermia after attempting to escape through a sewer, and hundreds now languish in jail cells. Right now, frightened right now, frightened parents of the students who remain on cam campus, they're holding vigil outside, praying that their children will be safe, clutching signs reading, save the kids, don't kill our children, and they are children of God, let them go. In the Congress, Democrats and Republicans stand united with the protesters and with the people of Hong Kong. Uh, we have stood un uh, united in a bipartisan way. It's been a very unifying issue for us, whether we're talking about the autonomy of t Tibet, uh, that the Chinese are trying to destroy the culture, the language, and the religion of Tibet. Uh, with the Uyghurs, we're 
one, two, three, maybe three million Uyghurs are under in education camps, which the Chinese government says they really enjoy being in, oh really? And for human rights uh, violations, suppression of human rights throughout, throughout all of China. If America does not speak out for human rights in China because of commercial interests, we lose all moral authority to speak out on human rights elsewhere. Since Tiananmen Square, many of us in a bipartisan way again have been fighting this fight and we have seen that commercial interests always make the fight. It's always for them been about money. To those who take the repressive Chinese government side, I say, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? Today, the House is proud to once again pass the bicameral, bipartisan Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act to reaffirm America's commitment to democracy, human rights, and the rule of law in the face of Beijing's crackdown. And I see we have been joined by the distinguished ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Mr. McCall. Thank you for your leadership in bringing this legislation to the floor. I acknowledged you earlier, along with our distinguished chairman, Mr. Engel. And we're proud to pass the Senate version of Chairman McGovern's Protect Hong Kong Act to suspend sales on dangerous munitions to the Hong Kong police. And we also salute Senator Merkley for his leadership in passing that on the Senate floor. The future of Hong Kong, the future of autonomy, freedom, and justice for millions is at stake. America must take a stand with Hong Kong. Uh, I'm so pleased that we are uh, making our statement in the Congress, in the House, and in the Senate on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans unified in speaking out for democracy. With that, I owe a yes vote on both of these bills and yield back the balance of my time. Gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it's my privilege to yield uh, such time as you may consume to the distinguished chair, uh, uh, ranking member uh, of the uh, Committee on Foreign Affairs. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. Two months ago, I had the opportunity to join a press conference with Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, Chairman Engel, uh, my colleague Chris Smith, and Hong Kong pro-democracy activist Joshua Wong, Nathan Law, and Dennis Ho to denounce China's authoritarian brutality. I said it then and I'll say it again. Today we stand here not as Republicans or Democrats, but as Americans united in our strong support for Hong Kong. And I'd like to take this opportunity to speak directly to the people of Hong Kong who I know are watching this right now. That America stands with you and America will always support you. We hear you sing our national anthem. We see you carrying our American flag. This is a battle between democracy versus dictatorship, liberty versus tyranny, and freedom versus oppression. This bill sends a clear message to China that there will be consequences to their ruthless and brutal actions. Congress, the United States, and the world will not stand by idly as the Chinese Communist Party fights for itself and not its own people. Again, I want to thank the authors of this bill. I'm proud to be a part of this movement, this cause. And we've seen quite a bit of uh, response on social media uh, on this bill coming directly from the people of Hong Kong to the members who are on this floor saying thank you for standing up for us. That is democracy in action. That is what this country stands for. And it's a proud moment, I think, for both sides of the aisle as we're going through this time in our history to be able to stand together for democracy and such a great movement and cause for freedom. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. The gentleman from Texas yields back. The gentleman from, Mass from New York is recognized. It's now my pleasure to yield four minutes to an important leader on this issue, the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern. Four minutes. The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of S. 1838, the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. I want to say thank you to Speaker Nancy Pelosi for her incredible leadership in ensuring that the House made a timely and unequivocal statement 
in support of the Hong Kong people at this very important and vital time. I would also like to thank uh, Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey, as well as Chairman Engel and Ranking Member McCall for bringing this legislation to the floor today. I also appreciate the leadership of Senators Rubio and Cardin and Menendez uh, for all that they have done. Mr. Speaker, in recent months, the situation in Hong Kong has worsened as the Chinese and Hong Kong governments have escalated repression against the protest movement and provoked more violence and chaos. The recent attacks on university campuses, including last weekend against students at Hong Kong Polytechnic University, raises disturbing questions on the strategy of the Chinese and Hong Kong governments. Protesters were violently assaulted and not even allowed to escape without facing a barrage of tear gas and police brutality. It is long past time for the Chinese and Hong Kong governments to try a different approach that respects the people of Hong Kong and restores the people's faith in the autonomy of the government. That's what political leaders do. They use dialogue and negotiation to achieve their goals. The demands of the protesters are reasonable, and an independent inquiry into the police violence is more than justified. In what was initially, uh, in what was initially a positive development, this week the Hong Kong High Court decided that the government's recent face mask ban was unconstitutional. Unfortunately, the fierce response by Beijing to that ruling and claim of sole jurisdiction over constitutional review almost certainly violates the basic law, subverts the rule of law, and further undermines whatever trust the Hong Kong people have left in their governing institutions. If the Hong Kong court system is not sufficiently autonomous, then it is difficult, if not impossible, to argue that Hong Kong is sufficiently autonomous. It should be clear by now that Hong Kong's leaders are beholden to the Chinese government and the independence of the judiciary is being undermined. The one country, two systems framework enshrined in the 1984 Sino-British Declaration and Hong Kong's basic law has been rapidly eroding and has now reached a point when the United States has no choice but to modify its policy toward Hong Kong. It is time we put the Chinese government on annual notice that further erosion of autonomy or a crackdown will cause the city, which serves as an important financial haven for wealthy Chinese elites, to lose its special economic, financial, and trade arrangement with the United States. Further, the legislation authorizes sanctions against individuals who violate human rights and states that Hong Kong, that, that Hong Kong visa applicants should not be denied entry to the U.S. on the basis of politically motivated arrests due to their protest activities. Today, a Chinese official said that they will take strong opposing measures if the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Bill passes. Well, I have a message for Beijing. The United States will not stand idly by while the Chinese government stifles free expression and tightens its grip on Hong Kong. Over the years, Hong Kong has prospered and become the financial center of Asia because of its strong commitment to the rule of law good governance, human rights, and an open ep economic system. We must use our leverage to help the people of Hong Kong in their struggle to secure a democratic future that protects Hong Kong's autonomy and a way of life. I am proud to support this legislation, which we will pass today with an overwhelmingly bipartisan majority. I now call upon the President of the United States, who has been way too silent on this issue, to sign the bill into law. With that, I yield back my time. Thank you very much. The gentleman's Mr. time has expired. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield uh, three minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Yoho, the ranking member of the Asia and Pacific Subcommittee. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I just want to give a shout out to the bipartisan nature of this bill. You know, both sides are working strongly on this. Chairman Engel, thank you. Uh, Mr. McGovern, thank you. Chris, uh, thank you for doing what you've done. Uh, it is true leadership, and to see uh, Speaker Pelosi down here, uh, I think it speaks loudly of how Americans stands on this. In September, I too had the honor of meeting with a few of the courageous leaders of Hong Kong student unions. They were advocating for peace, liberty, and freedom. These are basic, innate human rights that have been taken away from Hong Kongers by the authoritarian overreach of the Chinese Communist Party complex which is comprised of Xi Jinping, 
the Politburo of the Chinese Communist Party and leadership within the People's Liberation Army. As protests in Hong Kong continues into the sixth month, Xi Jinping still refuses to take responsibility for this unrest. The cause is simple, theft of basic rights and freedoms, not a separatist movement or foreign influence. Members of this body have been accused of being the cause of the protests. Speaker Pelosi was named individually, uh, Senator Schumer, Marco Rubio, and myself were named as the cause of the Hong Kong protests. This disdain was sparked by the introduction of the infamous extradition bill by Chief, uh, Chief Executive Kerry Lam at the command of the CCPC and has grown into what are known as the five demands. Had Xi Jinping and his cohorts just honored the 1997 international agreement between Great Britain and China, which allows Hong Kong to remain a self-ruling, self-autonomous province, none of this would have occurred. Not upholding one's contract has consequences. Disregarding contracts breaks trust and dishonors the country, its leaders, and its people. The narrative that the Chinese Communist Party complex has created for itself is that China cannot and should not be trusted and that the party will go to great lengths to dismantle free societies in their backyard. The survival of democracy and freedom exposes the failures of communism. Xi Jinping, along with his cohorts, lack of knowledge of acknowledgement or their failures, whether from deliberate denial or complete ignorance, was demonstrated by Mr. Han Zeng, China's vice premier, who said he believes anti-government protests are damaging the one country, two systems formula, and again are caused by a separatist movement and foreign influence. While sitting next to Chief uh, Executive Kerry Lam, he continued, we form firmly support the special administrative region government to adopt more proactive, more effective measures to solve the social problems. Since I wrote this, they have come out and said they expect to have um, brutality ramped up to bring these people under control. The proactive and more effective measures referred to by Mr. Han are intimidation, brutality, imprisonment, and death. As the international community is well aware, Beijing's Thank you. The gentleman has an additional minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the international community is well aware, Beijing's standard procedure for dealing with unrest is well documented. In the end, Xi Jinping will leave no stone unturned in their quest to destroy democracy. The party will spare no one in their fight to protest, protect communist ideals and power. Chief, Chief Executive Lam will be Beijing's sacrificial lamb and removed for two reasons. One, the Communist Party must save face and have a scapegoat, and Xi Jinping and the Communist Party must maintain their authority and not show weakness. Communism fears free thought and cannot survive in it, and I'm honored to stand with the uh, Hong Kong protesters and their important cause. I urge my colleagues to also stand with this courageous, the courageous individuals in Hong Kong and pass the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act, Ch uh, Chai Yao, to our friends, the Hong Kongers, standing up for your uh, basic human rights, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from New York is recognized. I ask unanimous, uh, unanimous consent that the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman, control the remainder of time on, on this side. Without objection, the gentleman from California is recognized. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from California reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield such time as it may consume to Mr. Hill, gentleman from Arkansas. The gentleman is recognized. Well, I thank the speaker, and I have to thank my good friend from New Jersey for his decades of service and leadership here for free expression, for liberty in Hong Kong. I was moved by the speaker's tribute and appreciate her 30 years of work there. And I thank uh, Mr. Engel uh, for his leadership from New York and, of course, my good friend from California who now is controlling time for the majority. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong support of the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act and stand with solidarity with the people of Hong Kong. For six months, we've witnessed Hong Kong citizens protest their right to live in a free and fair political system, an expectation they fully have. 
And over the last several weeks, we've witnessed the government become increasingly violent as it cracks down on protests. It is sad to see death and destruction come to this beautiful, energetic place. For three decades, I've traveled to Hong Kong and witnessed their innovative spirit and their extraordinary work ethic. In fact, Hong Kong was the model for the post-World War II Asian tiger growth and prosperity, now shared across the region. When a proponent of welfare statism queried pro-growth economist Melvin Kronaus, how many Hong Kong can the world have? The professor responded, as many as the world will allow itself. The seven million citizens of Hong Kong are looking to us for voice and for leadership. And with today's vote, we will deliver. I call on President Trump to sign this important measure into law with expediency and show the world that America supports the people of Hong Kong, their right to free expression, their democratic governance guaranteed under the five-decade arrangement agreed to in 1997 by the People's Republic of China and the United Kingdom. I thank Mr. Smith for his leadership. I urge all my colleagues to support this measure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from California reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. I reserve the balance of our time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. I reserve again, oh, okay. and uh, uh, I, we'll close when the gentleman has closed on his side. Thank you. The gentleman from California reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I yield to myself the remainder of the time. Without objection. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the United States and the world's response to the Tiananmen Square massacre uh, 30 years ago and the massive crackdown that, that was unleashed, unleashed uh, after that because of that weak response has enabled unrelenting and pervasive human rights abuses ever since. Had we been strong and predictable and said that human rights matter, had we linked it to MFN, the most favored nation status, and stuck to it, we would have had a different China today that, is, that at least more than it does today would re have respected the rule of law and human rights. We cannot recommit that mistake by being weak and vacillating in the face of this terrible, terrible attack on the people of Hong Kong and on their autonomy. Remember what we're asking Xi Jinping and Carrie Lam and all the other leaders in Hong Kong and in Beijing to do is just honor your promises. You made solemn promises that you are violating now with impunity. And we have to be very clear that if we enable that, if we look the other way or look askance, uh, we become unwittingly, perhaps, but complicit uh, in this terrible degrading of the human rights situation uh, for the people of Hong Kong. I want to remind my colleagues as well, and I think we all know this, but this bill is the work of so many who deeply care, many members across the aisle, you know, bipartisanship at a time when that seems to be uh, pretty much of a rare commodity. But when it comes to Hong Kong, we're all there joined together, arm in arm, uh, speaking out on behalf of these tremendous leaders who suffer and go to prison and endure tear gas and worse each and every day. I want to mention some of the staff members, and there are many. And in my, when I, we had the bill up on the 15th, I mentioned even more. But these members were instrumental in working on the legislation over the past five years. Remember, this is the fourth time I introduced it, and I've worked with Marco Rubio and others. This is a bicameral and bipartisan bill. Uh, I want to thank former staff directors of the CECE, Paul Protick and Elise Anderson, for their important work on Hong Kong and China. I want to thank Pierre Otazzi of my staff for his focus on human rights in China and around the world. And I particularly want to mention the contribution made to this legislation by Scott Flipsy of the CECE, CECC, the China Commission. In 2014, Dr. Flipsy first convinced me. We had met and he said, we've got a problem in Hong Kong. We need to address it. I was co-chair of the China Commission. And then we had meetings with Chinese leaders, Hong Kong leaders, and we began to see what was taking place in somewhat slow mo motion before our eyes that there was a long-term Beijing plan to undermine Hong Kong's autonomy and that the U.S. needed to focus its efforts on countering that plan. He has been a stalwart advocate for the people of Hong Kong ever since, and I again want to thank him for his critical contributions to this legislation. 
I yield back the balance. Thank you. Chairman's time has expired. Uh, the, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume for the purpose of closing. Uh, we vote today on S. 1838, but this is not just a Senate bill. This is a bill very similar to the one introduced on this, uh, in this House by the uh, gentleman from New Jersey. Uh, this House has already voted on that bill and supported it overwhelmingly. And uh, today we once again show the world uh, our commitment to the people of Hong Kong, to the preservation and protection of Hong Kong's autonomy, given uh, China's aggressive attempts to undermine the one country, two systems uh, approach. Uh, with this important legislation, we send a clear signal that the United States will hold those undermining Hong Kong's rights and autonomy, uh, we will hold them accountable, and that the American people stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of Hong Kong. Uh, with few exceptions, the people of Hong Kong have fought for their rights through peaceable protest, and we stand with them. Uh, I hope all members will join me in supporting the passage of this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. All time has been yielded back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate 1838? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two uh, uh, on there? that I request the yeas and yeas. Thirds being in the affirmative. Uh, uh, California is recognized to ask for the yeas and nays. I request the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass S. 2710 a bill to prohibit commercial exports of certain non-lethal crowd control items and defense articles and services to the Hong Kong police and for other purposes. The, cl the clerk report the title of the bill. Senate 2710, an act to prohibit the commercial export of covered munitions items to the Hong Kong police force. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman, and the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Smith, will each control 20 minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from California. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend the remarks and include extraneous materials on S-2710. Without objection, so ordered. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Mr. Speaker, let Recognize. me start by thanking uh, <laughs> Senator Merkley for his hard work on this legislation. The House, uh, a few weeks uh, before, passed a similar measure, the PROTECT Act, authored by uh, the uh, gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern. Uh, who I was about to refer to as the chair, but has now joined us uh, here in the, uh, 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 in the regular seats of the House. Uh, such bipartisan, bicameral legislation supporting the people of Hong Kong is a testament to the relationship between our two peoples, but is also an indication of Congress's deep concern over the growing violence in Hong Kong. In recent weeks, we've seen an escalation of the conflict between Hong Kong security forces and the people of Hong Kong. The same police force sworn to protect the people are now indiscriminately targeting people with uh, tear gas, pepper spray, and water cannons. I'm particularly heartbroken over the images of students under siege and parents begging the police not to shoot their children. We've seen similar images before, just 30 years ago in Beijing. The fact that these horrors are now taking place in Hong Kong, a beacon of democracy and human rights, is worrisome. I am deeply concerned by the recent escalation of violence and call on all parties to exercise restraint and seek a peaceful solution uh, to address the very legitimate concerns of the people of Hong Kong. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this important measure and ensure that U.S. companies are not contributing to the suppression of Hong Kong's people in their fight to secure their freedoms and their fight for democracy. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from uh, California reserves the balance of his time. Gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. is Speaker, recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support of S-2710, a bill that would prohibit the commercial export of covered munition items to the Hong Kong police force. I especially want to thank my good friend and colleague, Chairman McGovern, for his legislation, which was pretty much of a companion bill that passed uh, one month ago, a little over a month ago, Again, uh, on the whole idea of U.S. origin equipment, 
uh, being exploited in Hong Kong against these, these protesters. Uh, I want to thank him for doing that, and we have raised this in hearings, uh, and his bill was a, a great bill. As the largest protest movement in Hong Kong uh, has ever seen continues, major concerns have arisen about the Hong Kong police's independence and their professionalism. The people of Hong Kong are rightfully furious about well-documented cases of excessive force, brutal tactics, and tolerance of violence against protesters. The Hong Kong police themselves are now a cause of the protests. There's been widespread police misuse of crowd control equipment and less lethal weaponry, including incidents that have seriously injur injured journalists. So I'm, I'm glad this bill is before us. Uh, it passes, it goes to the president, and I fully expect he will sign it into law. I uh, reserve the balance of our time. Gentleman from New Jersey reserves. Gentleman from California, Mr. Chairman, is recognized. The members of this House will remember that just a few months ago we passed very similar legislation to the House bill that is in front of us today. Uh, it is my honor to yield four minutes to an important leader on this issue, the gentleman who wrote the House version of this bill, the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern. The gentleman uh, from Massachusetts is recognized for four minutes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my colleague from California, Mr. Sherman, for his leadership on this and so many other important issues. Uh, uh, and uh, to uphold a high standard of human rights. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of S-2710, the Placing Restrictions on Tear Gas Exports and Crowd Control Technology to Hong Kong Act, otherwise known as the Protect Hong Kong Act. I am proud to have introduced this bipartisan legislation along with my colleague Chris Smith of New Jersey and Ro Khanna of California in the House, and Senators Merkley and Senator Cornyn uh, introduced it in the Senate. This bill responds to the excessive an unnecessary use of force by the Hong Kong police targeting those engaged in peaceful protests. The Protect Hong Kong Act prohibits U.S. exports of police equipment to Hong Kong, including tear gas, pepper spray, grenades, rubber bullets, foam rounds, beanbag rounds, pepper balls, water cannons, handcuffs, shackles, stun guns, and tasers. The Hong Kong police force is simply out of control. The reckless and escalating use of violence flies in the face, uh, it flies in the face, manufacturer guidelines and international standards on the use of force. In recent days, the world has seen eyewitness evidence showing protesters sprayed with tear gas directly in the face at short distances. Rampant beatings and arbitrary arrests of people from ages 11 to 74. Police driving at high speeds into crowds and unarmed protesters shot with live rounds. The British government already suspended export, export licenses for the sale of tear gas and crowd control equipment until concerns about human rights abuses are addressed. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights called for an investigation of the use of crowd control tactics uh, in Hong Kong. Mr. Speaker, enough is enough. It is time for American companies to stop selling police equipment that are being used to suppress peaceful protests. Mr. Speaker, uh, this today we will cast votes on two pieces of legislation that will make it crystal clear to Beijing that we in this Congress, in a bipartisan manner, stand in solidarity with the protesters of Hong Kong. And we also uh, stand with them in their demands, um, among which is there needs to be an independent investigation and inquiry into the brutal tactics of the Hong Kong police force. It is absolutely outrageous. It is unacceptable. It goes beyond the pale. We have all seen the pictures, the photographs, the videos uh, that, are, that, are, that are on our social media. Um, anybody who cares about human rights, anybody who cares about human rights will stand with us proudly uh, and vote for these two pieces of legislation. So I urge all my colleagues to support the Protect Hong Kong Act. And with that, uh, I thank the gentleman from California and yield back my time. Gentleman yields back the balance of his time. Gentleman from California, Mr. Uh, Sherman, uh, reserves. Gentleman from New Jersey is Mr. Recognized. Speaker, we have no further requests for time. I yield back the balance Gentleman yields time. back uh, his time. Uh, gentleman from California. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume for the purpose of closing. Gentleman's recognized. We have watched as the Chinese Communist Party works to break down and undermine the one country, two systems framework that has paved the way for a strong relationship between uh, Hong Kong and the United States. 
Uh, this has motivated millions of Hong Kongers, the people of Hong Kong, to take to the streets for months to protest in defense of their basic human rights. These pro-democracy activists have faced tear gas, pepper spray, and rubber bullets by a police force sworn to protect them, and now they face lethal force as well. The passage of this bill demonstrates once again to the people of Hong Kong that the United States stands with them in their protest of China's erosion of the autonomy and the way of life that was promised them back in 1997. It takes a step to ensure that U.S. companies demonstrate a commitment to U.S. values in this regard, making sure that U.S. companies aren't facilitating violence against the protesters by selling what we sadly uh, know can be uh, lethal uh, crowd control uh, mechanisms. This uh, bill is a important part of Congress's response by the effort of Beijing to deprive Hong Kong of the autonomy and democracy that it was promised back in 1997. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this bill. I yield back the balance of my time. Chairman from California yields back the balance of time. The question is will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate Bill 2710? Those in favor say aye. Those uh, opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Mr. The Speaker, uh, on that I request the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed.